I really like system design interviews. Like it's my favorite interview when I'm applying to a place. And it's also my favorite interview to give to other engineers. I've probably given it well over a hundred times at this point. And I've noticed some patterns, let's call them, or anti-patterns that I'm seeing a lot of engineers fall into when they're studying, planning, and participating in these interviews. And I kind of wanted to chat about these pitfalls, let's call them, that I'm seeing engineers fall into. How to avoid them and how to think about the interview at different stages of your career, because actually it changes. And what I've realized a lot of folks don't understand is system design is usually the most important part of getting a level when you get a job. You can do okay on a coding interview and kill it in a system design and you'll probably get the higher level than you would the inverse. If you do great on a coding challenge and okay on system design, you're probably going to get down level, to be honest. And I don't think a lot of engineers expect that. And I think that's why I think a lot of these anti-patterns show up. So let's get into how you actually should be thinking about system design when you initially start in the field in general, right? You're a green software engineer, you're learning about this thing called system design, you maybe have very little experience right out of school. How should you be studying for system design? Very prescriptive, follow the basics, right? I link some resources down below. You should know what a three-tier web application, you should know all the things on this little diagram over here, what a load balancer is, what a cache, what a CDN is, how those work together. You should know some buzzwords like cap theorem and ACID and SQL versus NoSQL. If you're going for a more infra SRE role or an org that you know maybe doesn't have an infra SRE DevOps department, you probably have to know about like cloud computing and networking with the OSI model and things like the 12-factor app. Basics in the sense that a lot of this is buzzwordy, but there's a lot of good resources out there. Let's talk about some of those resources that I like. Some of my favorites, there's a GitHub link to a system design primer. It's massive. It tells you how to think about the interview itself. I like Byte Byte Go stuff. You've probably seen his YouTube videos. He also has a book that's pretty prescriptive. It talks about, I'm saying things about Kafka and queuing, right? You just need something that kind of takes you and explains the space, explains the unknown unknowns. Also have some links here to some other good resources, some blog posts, etc. Again, link down in the description, right? Now, you understand the basics of system design. You may have gotten a job from this. Congrats. Now, the problem I see a lot of engineers fall into is they expect all of their interviews to be very hypothetical system design interviews, and they're really not. Now, a lot of system design planning and a lot of interview planning in general is focused on very high-level FANG interviews, but not everywhere hires like Google, for example. And you've probably seen that with coding interviews. You study leak code, and then you get a practical question at a place and it's nice that you got a practical question. Like, Leak Code didn't hurt you for studying for that practical question. But unfortunately, with system design, it's a little bit different. So I think once an engineer has this position, right, they may have answered a very simple question like system design question to get a job. And then when they're going to get their next job or later in their career, as they've gotten a few years of experience, they tend to go to a list like this. And it's like, how would you design WhatsApp? And then a lot of engineers will kind of go down a list like this, like their leak coding, and they would solve each of these and count it done and look up a solution. And they learn the patterns, and they learn the expectations for these interviews. And then I think that hurts them when it comes to a lot of system design interviews kind of later in their career, because a lot of those interviews aren't really expecting those same patterns. What are they expecting? Well, a lot of times system design at this stage is conversations about what you've built and what considerations did you take in the sense of system design in general for those systems. Like not everything is design what app. A lot of times there are conversations about projects that you're currently working on. And this also extends past the system design interview, right? Think about those conversations you have with a hiring manager or behavioral or even parts of the coding interview, how it integrates with things that you've built. A lot of it is more practical conversations building on the theoretical experience you already had, but what can you talk about the things you've actually done? And a lot of people don't consider this system design, but a lot of your system design interviews are gonna be shaped like this or a combination of the two. You got your basics, you can talk about you know, horizontal scaling, but then when you're pushed to a limit and asked why you would make a certain decision or pick a certain database, it's probably gonna be expected at this point you're leaning on your experience. And you know, sometimes I think a lot of times the trap that engineers fall into here is you know they'll answer, like, uh, for example, the question is, you know, what? why would you pick a certain language? Why would you pick TypeScript over Python, for example? And instead of talking about the differences there, they'll just be like, oh, that was what my organization used. But you should be able to at least talk about the pros and cons of the tools you're using and talk about what you're doing. And a lot of people can't do this. It's kind of weird, right? Like they can talk about horizontal scaling and caches when talking about Twitter, but then they don't even know what database, you know, they're interacting with and why that's better than something else. 
right? In your head, theoretically think through rebuilding the tools that you're working on, right? What database would you use? How is that better or worse than what you're currently using? And whenever you make a decision in your theoretical planning of the system, ask yourself why you made that decision. What considerations are you taking into account? A really good tip here is if you're fortunate enough to work at a place that has design docs, read it as many as you can. It's really low effort. Design docs are super raw. You know, you don't get the like, like legal going over a blog post, right? Internal design docs are probably the best constraints and in information you'll have about a system overall than you can read. And they'll also have better information about things like productionization, right? Like what does it take to scale it? What does it take to monitor it? What does it take to deploy it? So at this stage, you'd be thinking about, you know, merging theoretical with practical. And I think a lot of engineers miss that practical side, right? They can't talk about what they're working on. Even if you're not getting the coolest, craziest projects, you should be able to talk about it or side projects or things that you've read about in the industry overall, right? We're looking for some blending of experience, right? You get it? Okay, let's move on. Now, just like all things as you get farther in your, 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 your engineering journey, uh, things get a little bit more vague. And as you're going more senior and senior plus, it's all about constraints and deep understanding. And deep understanding is not just technical, right? It may be organizational, right? How does the system you're designing fit into the organization? And truly understanding the nuance and having opinions. A really good example of this is, you know, I used to give a system design interview years ago that part of it was building an internal tool, right? And a, a very fair answer didn't follow any of the advice of earlier system design best practices because if an engineer would come to the interview and actually ask really good questions about what is needed for this application, they would learn that it was just an internal app and it you know, didn't have high expectations for uptime. So a really good answer here might just be, you know, running a single application with the SQLite on the same instance, right? Like that could be a valid, that, that could be a valid design for this case, but they should be able to talk about the trade-offs they're making when making that design, right? You should be able to back up, it depends. And how do you back up, it depends? Well, you understand the deep problem space. And one more, how do you understand the deep problem spaces, actually understand the problem. And the best way I think about thinking about problems, I think about thinking about problems, is I think at this stage, system design is all about constraints. And this is probably getting the most technical here because I think this is when you're no longer thinking about just the solutions that you know about or solutions you've worked on, but actually understanding the problem. And I wanted to share some resources here that were really helpful for me taking this next level where now I love system design interviews. Like honestly, they're my little happy place when it comes to interview loops because of, I think, these three resources. When I mentioned thinking about constraints, right, when you're designing a system and when you're in these interviews and you're talking about systems, like, what are you designing around? Why are you scaling? Why do you have to make certain considerations? It's usually because of one of these three things. Either something is compute limited, right? You don't have enough resources to crunch the numbers. It's networking limited, right? The speed of light is only so fast, right? People are not next to each other, right? Networking requires bits moving around or it's data limited, right? Let me go through all three of those and talk through uh, how I think you should think about studying for this at, at, I think, a progressing level to a senior engineer, let's say. Now, first thing first is CPU limited. Uh, funny enough, this is like less important than it used to be because practically we just throw computers and server, more servers at things. But this is kind of a weird one because this leans back into data structures and algorithms, right? How does the software you're writing run on the system that it's expected to run on. Learn the tools you're using, right? There's a lot of times conversations about tooling, the different algorithms you're using or the different languages you're using, right? You should be able to have that conversation. Now, this is the least important book for generic system design understanding here. I think it's a very important book if you're an SRE or you're interested in performance engineering in general, and that's System Performance Enterprise in the Cloud by Brendan Gregg. God, it's a boring, boring, boring title, but this is probably one of the best engineering books I've ever read. Uh, Brendan Gregg is great. His website is great. Uh, if you're in kind of infra-esque space, you know Brendan Gregg because uh, he, he yelled at a server once. <laughs> but uh, this book is great and I think it will help you understand, you know, how your software runs on modern computers, servers, how your software runs and the performance in Applications of that. Oh my God, I'm running out of steam, as you can tell. The next constraint here is networking. I mentioned earlier the speed of line is only so fast, but you have to understand the limits with routers and 
the connection speed of mobile phones and, you know, how that impacts your user's experience of using your application. And again, I'm like not super lo in love with a lot of networking books. Actually, this is the only good networking book I've ever read. It's not that long. I actually have all these today as examples. It's not that long for a networking book. I have a TCP IP book over on the wall over there that's older than I am. That's like 1,200 pages. This is easy reading. And it's actually pretty interesting. It's, you know, talking pretty practically about how networking works and why that matters to you as an engineer building for the modern internet. Now, lastly, now this one is most important. You know, the other two are kind of nerdy. This one is like must have if you want to level up your system design thinking. Actually, I think my whole thought process around constraints came from this book. And that is designing data intensive applications. And this is around the data constraint because most modern constraints, most modern systems are constrained by data, either processing data, querying data, storing data, moving data, right? Our applications are data bound and this book explores it great now this book is bigger it's great though like this is when you can truly answer no sequel versus sequel actually i'll probably make a video on that based on this book alone and it's beyond just like this one has tables this one has keys like it, it goes much deeper than that and this is the book once you start truly understanding the problem space it makes everything else easier in all of system design right if you understand how to make decisions about those constraints it's less about remembering the patterns and the differences between horizontal and vertical scaling, but it's being able to answer why. And that's what I think takes system design to the senior and senior plus level. Whew, that was system design. I am clearly fading. Like I said, all of these are going to be linked down below with links to the books, the resources I found helpful. Um, good luck in your system design interviews. And, uh, I don't know if you if you ask me hard enough in the comments maybe I'll find a way to publish this uh, Excalibur draw somewhere and uh, have a good day. See y'all.